on the phone. It is always a pleasure to welcome back to this program, I think, one of the hard, hardest working reporters out there. You can check out his, um, his work every day if you are a fast reader because there's so much of it. Uh, and it's all great. He is. Um, he blogs at Fire Dog Lake, the news section. Are you there, uh, David? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you okay? I know. I appreciate uh, you. You've just rushed in from uh, <laughs> a trip to the airport, and um, uh, so I appreciate you taking the time because um, you have been one of those people who have been um, doggedly following the mortgage crisis for years. You have been following the lack of prosecutions by the Department of Justice, the lack of enforcement, and you've been following this deal that the administration has been pushing the uh, state's attorney generals from picking up. So to, let's start with the news from Monday, I believe it was, of a floating of a new deal. Just uh, let's start there. Mm-hmm. So there was uh, reported uh, a breakthrough over uh, this past weekend um, on terms of a deal that would give as much as $25 billion for efforts uh, on uh, foreclosure mitigation and also uh, compensation for people wrongfully foreclosed, I think $1,800 checks, uh, another $17 billion uh, for principal reduction for underwater homeowners, also refinancing, there's money in there. Um, and uh, this falls along the contours of what we've seen, uh, but the claim was that uh, the terms have been set, and there's this big meeting in Chicago on Monday uh, with all the Democrats uh, who are attorney generals. Um, the, the truth was that actually none of the attorney generals who were holdouts on this deal were there. Uh, at this meeting on Monday, uh, and most of them uh, gave statements that they still opposed the deal because, for various reasons, whether it was just too paltry a sum, we have $700 billion in negative equity in this country, and it was a $17 billion principal reduction uh, to that end, for example. Uh, it says it would help 1 million homeowners, and, and there are 10.7 million homeowners underwater. Uh, and also it would uh, release far too much liability. Uh, there's also the issue that the last time that we did a multi-state settlement like this in the countrywide case, uh, the banks just didn't do their end of the bargain. <laughs> it's, uh, the Bank of America did not do the modifications. In fact, they kept actively harming borrowers. So for a variety of reasons, uh, there was a lot of energy on the left saying, we have to stop this deal. This is ridiculous. Uh, this, this, we haven't done meaningful investigations. Now, we have not the, the, uh, the, uh, put together the right thing. Anyway, the, go ahead. The five uh, holdouts, uh, Schneiderman in New York basically started the cascade, uh, cascade mm -hmm. maybe uh, too uh, strong of a word, uh, Bo Biden in Delaware, Martha Coakley in Massachusetts, um, and uh, Nevada. Catherine Court. Yeah, yeah, Nevada's Catherine Cortez Masto and Kamala Harris out here in California. And we've, um, we've spoken in the past, yeah. and, and um, Kamala Harris in, in California uh, got a lot of pushback from uh, left, uh, left-leaning left groups not to be a part of this deal. There was obviously a, a lot of cover with Schneiderman, and, and, and let's just hold off addressing why uh, it's important to reference the sort of um, the activist work on this because uh, this latest uh, uh, yeah. story with Schneiderman sort of presents some problems that are developing on that front. But so that was the yeah. deal as announced on Monday. And then last night, uh, just as the State of the Union was starting, there's a story that breaks an exclusive Sam Stein has it on Huffington Post, and it's referenced, I believe, uh, by uh, President Obama in his speech. Tell us what that is. Yes, there was uh, a reference to it in the speech uh, of a, uh, an arm of the Financial Fraud Task Force, which uh, you would not uh, be uh, uh, remiss if you didn't know it existed. Uh, for the last three years, there's been this thing called the Financial Fraud Task Force, and uh, surely it's been doing uh, very, very difficult uh, and, and, and comprehensive work. Um, so now there's going to be this mortgage... 
uh, origination and securitization unit as part of this task force that is tasked with looking into uh, those two major issues, the origination of mortgages and the fraud contained therein, and the I- illegal securitization, which is the bundling up of these mortgages uh, into mortgage-backed securities, uh, selling them to investors when, in fact, uh, the proper chain of title was not conveyed when you uh, when they they put the mortgages into the trust. Uh, there was various uh, fraud in the ter- in the misrepresentations and and warranties that they uh, when they actually conveyed these these mortgages to the investors. They, they so uh, it, it's looking at all of that. The and this is probably the greatest liability that the banks have. Um, and now, when Schneider we say, has, let me just, uh, just, just so the people understand, yeah. and when we say origination, uh-huh. we're talking about uh, the people who actually uh, made the loan at first, which is often not those people who end up uh, securitizing it. Um, and right. we're to, or, yeah, we're talking about the subprime lenders, uh, most of whom are out of business. I, I think that the reason that origination is in here is because uh, uh, keeping that jurisdiction alive helps you with the securitization. Uh, uh, investigations. So, uh, you know, I mean, you're not going to sue Countrywide. They're, they're, they don't exist anymore. And, and the same with uh, AmeriQuest or, or any of these other subprime lenders. But there's a reason to put it in there. Anyway, the point is that Schneiderman uh, was announced as part one of the co-chairs of this committee. And it's a five-person committee. I, I don't know why it is a five-person committee, because that doesn't seem to be the best way it uh, seems like an independent prosecutor is the way that you, you know, deliver an investigation, not a, a committee. But uh, who else is on this committee? So we have uh, uh, Lanny Brewer from the Justice Department, who has, uh, you know, was last seen on 60 Minutes uh, explaining and making every excuse in the book why it's so hard to do these prosecutions uh, against banks, uh, who was a, a partner at the White Shoe Law Firm Covington and Burling, who actually created the legal underpinning for MERS, and I don't want to totally get into MERS, but let's just say they're massively conflicted on financial services issues. Well, MERS, um, just briefly, is, uh, we've talked about it on this program very much, it was the uh, essentially the online version that supplanted, um, yeah. uh, that, that, that said to mortgage companies and to securitizers, you don't have to go uh, and create a chain of title through your uh, local municipal or county uh, clerk's office. We'll just do it online. It's made up by the banks. We're going to save billions. And, in fact, what it has created is a, 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 a an argument fraudulent chain of title. Um, yeah. And let me say one more it's thing a about... key element. Let me say one more thing about Lenny Brewer. Element. Let me say one more thing yeah. about Lenny Brewer. The last time I saw his name was uh, four words in off of a uh, Reuters story on January 20th, which said, Insight, top justice officials connected to mortgage banks. I yeah, mean- exactly. And, and, and that's Covington and Burling, and that's specifically around MERS and some of the other uh, the services, uh, uh, banks and, and entities they represent. Um, one of the other co-chairs is Robert Kuzami, who's the head, current head of enforcement for the SEC. Before that, he was the general counsel for Deutsche Bank, who was one of the, the key trustees uh, in this entire securitization scheme. Um, you know, the SEC has not necessarily been a model of enforcement over the last few years. In fact, they were wrapped by Judge uh, Jed Rakoff in New York for continuing to give these settlement deals to banks where they don't even force them to admit or deny any wrongdoing uh, in, in the settlement. Uh, so, you know, it, it looks to me like, you know, I, I, I think Schneiderman has earned some degree of trust that he's trying to, you know, move forward the investigations on the things that really matter, but he looks outvoted on this panel. Um, and the real concern is that this is a means for uh, the very united coalition on the left who is opposed to a settlement to go ahead and say, okay, we got our investigation, now we can do the settlement on these other issues, we still have this, this investigation, this torch that we can you know, hold up, uh, and, and, and that's going to be our way forward. So it, it seems like it's greasing the skids towards the deal. Another point to that is the fact that another member of this panel is Tony West, who's a, a Justice Department official, who also happens to be Kamala Harris's brother-in-law. 
So, you know, the pressure on, on Harris to get this done is intense, especially, uh, you know, if you have a family member who's on this panel, you have, uh, they're dangling a carrot of $8 billion of principal reductions for constituents in her state in front of her. It's the only state that's earmarked, like, this is the money that's going to California. Um, so there's tremendous pressure on her. There, 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 you know, many of the organizations in California have, have said, oh, this is a great thing, and, and uh, uh, that Obama's finally taking this seriously and uh, with this investigation. And, and, you know, it just, I'm concerned that we have this kind of regulatory theater with this investigation and then the settlement will be a blow to efforts at accountability. Okay, so what we should be looking for is whether or not um, Schneiderman and uh, Camila Harris sign off on this settlement. Yeah. And that's now, the first I thing have to look been, at, right? Since I, wrote, yeah, since I wrote about this this morning, I've been somewhat assured that there is political space for the New York Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, to accept this position uh, uh, on this enforcement or this investigative panel and also object to the settlement. Uh, if that's the case, uh, then, you know, there, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with more investigation, even though it's tied in with the same people who didn't investigate for three years. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm being told. Uh, so we'll have to see that play out. Uh, what I have seen is that the activist coalition on the left that, that has been objecting to this settlement came out and gave unqualified praise to this investigative panel. Uh, and that's, that's certainly damaging to, uh, you know, the, the ability of them to hold up a front, uh, the ability of all these other AGs who have, who have actually been, you know, against this thing to hold up a front against uh, the tremendous pressure they're under. Right. In your post today, you outlined uh, the email blast you got from um, Move On, the new bottom line, uh, uh, Campaign for America's yeah, Future, for, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And uh, that, it is disturbing. The, the, uh, the coincidence of language, the uh, fervor in which it came out, the, how quickly, how unequivocal, uh, all of that is a little bit disturbing. So, the uh, on one hand, we see the possibility that Schneiderman is still has the space to uh, reject this deal, and um, but may have more resources because he has access to now federal um, uh, mm -hmm. cooperation and whatnot that he could theoretically bring back to New York. It may help him get a bigger uh, view of it. On the other hand, what we're seeing is Schneiderman being co-opted, uh, and uh, he, I'm not sure what his upside in this is, other than there may be enough, you know, who knows in politics. Yeah, I mean, I guess he, he feels that, that he can leverage some resources here from the federal government, some different jurisdictions, uh, some, some uh, bigger subpoena power, uh, more of a budget. Uh, to actually do the investigation that needs to be done. Uh, I, I feel that he's probably sincere in those efforts. I just feel like this panel is, is you know, in some ways designed to fail. And, uh, you know, it, it, you have to look at the track record here. Right. You know, there was a financial fraud task force for the last three and a half years. It hasn't really gotten anywhere. And, uh, or last three years, I should say. Um, it's sort of stunning and, and that there's been things. a task force. I mean, it's I mean, I, I, you know, all I do is read this stuff on a daily basis, and I've never yeah. even heard those words. They've been <laughs> financial fraud task force. Exactly. They have been. I mean, it's like a super sleuth agency. <laughs> they're they're deep undercover, Sam. <laughs> uh, so you know, it, it's 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 hard to get terribly excited about this, but you know, I mean. I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to be proven wrong, and I'm sure that the, the groups that aren't probably very happy with me right now are, are telling me that I'm wrong and, and uh, that this is a legitimate investigative panel and that uh, we're, we're going to see some real accountability here. I, I, I'd, I'd like to believe that. It does seem weird. I mean, look, 
you, I, you rarely hear of an investigative body that's actually going to bring charges. You know, it's one thing to have recommendations, but these are all uh, entities that can bring charges, right? I mean, individually, yeah. m- most of these five guys, or four of them at least, are uh, heads of agencies that can bring charges. This isn't like the commission that was set up with, um, uh, you know, the uh, financial meltdown uh, commission, where it's just supposed to send recommendations right. to the Department of Justice where they go to die, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so No, this, this can be a prosecutory panel, as, as far as I can see. So, but why do you need yes. a panel? That's the real question. Well, I mean, it doesn't make any is, sense. <laughs> you, first of all, you've already had one. Second of all, uh, you know, with far less resources, attorney generals like uh, Catherine Cortez Masto in, in Nevada and Martha Copley in Massachusetts have already brought suits uh, in, in Masto's case, criminal indictments right. uh, against uh, LPS, the document processor that, that created a lot of these fabricated and forged documents. Uh, in in Coakley's case, a civil case against many of the banks for essentially stealing homes. So you know they they didn't seem to have this resource capacity problem uh, that 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 stopped them from doing the lawsuits. Now, Schneiderman's been great in terms of the optics of this and 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 objecting to the settlement. He hasn't actually brought any cases. He's done some investigation, um, and now we're hearing about a, a further investigation. So at some point, he has to put his cards on the table. Uh, and I'm not sure that this body, this investigative body, is set up for him to even do that. Well, it'll be interesting to see. And listen, I know you got to go, but let me just one more question for you, because it, it's, it's somewhat related, uh, because this was almost a one-two punch. The flip side of, of this is that uh, President Obama also um, uh, asked Congress to pass a mass refinancing plan, which would go beyond uh, any uh, refinancing that could happen through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac-owned uh, mortgages, but would be across the board. Uh, what yeah. can you tell us about that? Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not going to pass. Uh, right. I, 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 don't, I don't know if there's even a reason to say much about it. Uh, it it's, it's just not really going to happen. And even if it did happen... Uh, I, I can't see how it could be anything but discretionary on the part of the banks, and then you get into the same problems that you have with the settlement, which is that if you put it at their discretion, uh, they, they have not historically been uh, a set of companies that has an interest in the consumer uh, uh, rather than an interest in their own bottom line. So it, it, it's, it's a bit puzzling to me. I mean, there were a lot of things in the speech that are just sort of thrown out there, you know, send me an up or down vote on every single appointee within 90 days. Well, that's not going to really happen, but uh, right. it's a nice sentiment. Um, so, well, that was the know, dilemma. I appreciate, that was, I appreciate the settlement, but that, I appreciate that, the sentiment. But that, I, I, I mean, that was the, sort of the dilemma with the, this uh, with this speech. I mean, on one hand, I had a problem with him basically telling uh, the speaker, I- I'm ready to do that grand bargain again. We can cut Social Security and Medicare. Uh, and yeah, well. So, you know, that's not going to happen either. That's so, not going to happen you know, either. So, it really I'll, I'll give him slack on that and if if I don't have to thank him for this mortgage refinancing plan that's, that's exactly the dilemma. Imagine if you were hosting a show talking about it. Uh the state of the year. <laughs> it's like uh it's like two uh, bald men fighting over a comb. It's all interesting, <laughs> but at the end of the day, um uh, you know, but uh, David Dayan, like I say, the most important thing to come out of the State of the Union address was uh, the uh, announcing of this uh, second task force, uh, which uh, hopefully will not be so uh, sleuthy. Uh, <laughs> That's and, the first one, yeah. Yeah, but uh, so we will keep our eye on, uh, on whether or not Eric Schneiderman signs off on this proposed deal uh, that the uh, uh, the Obama administration so desperately wants the uh, U.S. AGs to sign off on, uh, the state AGs, I should say, and uh, that will be the first tell, no? That will be the first tell, and, and we'll really have to look at what kind of liability is being released in that product if it, if it comes to pass. David Dayan, the news editor at Fire Dog Lake. Uh, we, of course, will link to uh, David Dayan's blog. You cannot... You cannot do more to get yourself informed about what's going on than to read his uh, blog every day.